In this short video, we're going to talk about Little's Law. Little's Law is a simple formula that explains the relationship among flow time, throughput, and work in process. So in this chapter, chapter 16 on Lean, we've been talking a lot about improving throughput, and Little's Law is a measure of what that throughput is. So it's a relation, it's a simple formula that explains the relationship among flow time, throughput, and work in process. Um, when you're going through your chapter 16 materials and preparing for quizzes and exams, uh, it's important to note that Little's Law is not in our textbook. It's in lots of other textbooks, but it's not in ours. Uh, so I wanted to bring it to your attention and teach you Little's Law because again, it's a very simple formula and it's very useful. When you have two of the three inputs, you can always solve for the third. So um, the formula for Little's Law is inventory equals throughput multiplied by flow time. Your inventory is your work in process. That's essentially anything that is not completed yet. And for Little's Law, that can be something that's being built in a raw, um, as raw materials in a manufacturing facility, or it can be the uh, whatever's in process in some kind of service. So the examples you'll see uh, coming up here are people who are in a voting queue or home loan applications. So all of that could be something that is considered work in process. Throughput is the long-term average rate that items are flowing through a process. Flow time is the, take, the time that it takes uh, to get a unit uh, from the beginning of the end to a process. It's a lot like the manufacturing cycle time, but uh, for Little's Law, it's called flow time. And again, if we know any of the two uh, uh, variables of these three, then we can solve for that third. So let's real quickly go through two examples of Little's Law together. So suppose that a voting facility processes an average of 50 people per hour. And on average, it takes 10 minutes for each person to complete the voting process. Compute the average number of voters in this process. Okay, so I've given you two of the three variables and you need to solve for this third one. So you know your R, which is your throughput, and that's what? It's 50 people per hour. You know your T, which is your flow time, and that's 10 minutes per person. So we are trying to solve for how many people are within this process. We're trying to solve for the WIP. So our formula is WIP equals R times T. Our R is 50 people per hour. Our T is flow time, which is 10 minutes. Now it's given in minutes, so we're going to need to convert that. So WIP equals R multiplied by T equals 50 voters per hour, so you're going to take 10 minutes divided by 60 minutes per hour. That's your T, your flow time is 10 minutes divided by 60 minutes per hour. Your R, which is your 50 people per hour, that is here on the left. So you've got 50 people per hour multiplied by 10 minutes as your flow time per person. And therefore you're gonna have 8.33 voters in this process at any given time. So unless I give you an exact number of 8.33 people, then uh, the answer would be something along the lines of eight or nine voters inside the facility, um, but I would not give you the options of eight or nine as both correct answers, because one of those would be wrong. So it'll be either, either be 8.3 or between eight and nine people in this process, something along those lines. So you've now solved for Little's law example number one your answer is 8.33 voters are in this process at any given time. Okay, example number two. Suppose that the loan department of a bank takes an average of six days to process an application and that an internal audit found that about 100 applications are in various stages of processing at any one time. Calculate the throughput of the department per month. So this example says solve for the throughput. Throughput is your R. Your WIP, in this case, is given. So your work in process is 100 applications, and your, your uh, T, which is your flow time, is six days. So we're trying to solve for throughput, which is the R. Your flow time is six days, and since there's 30 days in a month, always use 30 days per calendar month unless a different number is given to you, like 29 days or 31 days, always assume 30 days. So your flow time is 0.2 per month. 
Your WIP is 100 applications at any given time in the process that was given. So now you will take your formula, which is WIP equals throughput multiplied by flow time, and you will flip it, and you will now solve for R. And so your R equals your WIP of 100 applications divided by 0.2 per month, and that gives you 500 applications per month. Your 0.2, I went a little fast on that one, your 0.2 is your flow time, which you solved for up here. Because your flow time is six days, six days divided by 30 days gives you 0.2. So 100 applications divided by your flow time gives you 500 applications per month, per month. That is your throughput, or your R. So you're all done. You've now calculated Little's Law. That's two examples for you. In one of them we solve for WIP, one of them we solve for the throughput. Um, again, Little's Law is just showing that there's a long-term relationship between the inventory, throughput, and flow time of a production system in a steady state. It's very useful to have this formula when you're looking at lean operations.